Hey guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have my January book haul. unboxings that I just never really got to this month so I think what I'm gonna do is start with those first we're gonna go through them semi quickly uh, and then we're gonna jump into the rest of the books so the first box that we have here is our January owl crate I don't think I know the theme for either of the boxes that I have here um, but I'm super excited to jump into it so this is the card that came with the box, and it does look like our theme is magical artifacts. I'm going to avoid the spoilers as much as possible. And the first item is in this cute little box. Okay, it looks like a bracelet. And so we have this gold band here. I really do like how delicate it looks. It sort of reminds me of a branch. I can't tell if this is supposed to be more like a thorny branch or just a branch in general. I am not the biggest gold jewelry person but this is really gorgeous so according to the spoiler cards this is actually an antler bracelet that is inspired by shadow and bone and this was created just by the owl crate team next one of the things i am most excited for is they are including pins starting in january so every box should be included with an enamel pin i absolutely love pins and so i'm very excited for this this is one of the things i was definitely looking forward to and so our pin for this month has like a wolf on it and it says wolves were everywhere. So again, it looks like according to the spoiler card, the pins are going to be related to the book of the month. And this one was designed by Alchemy and Ink. Next, we have a pair of socks. I absolutely love it when they send us crew socks. These ones are Deathly Hollows related. Um, I love these mostly because my husband ends up stealing them. I usually maybe wear them like once and then he ends up wearing them under his pants for work. Um, but these are really, really nice quality. And these ones were also designed by the team Owl Crate and Michelle Gray. Okay, the next thing we have is a pouch. And so it is a double-sided pouch. So on this side here we have the Astravars to travel. And then on this side it says, Kel wore a very peculiar coat by V.E. Schwab. So this one obviously has to do with a darker shade of magic. And this was designed by Stella Bookish Art. Next, we have something that comes in this one here. It does not look like an easy pouch to actually open, so I'm going to leave it in here for now. But it looks like we have a sting sword. Um, it is completely made out of wood. Um, and it was created by Vector Engraving, which is actually really cool. I really enjoy this a lot because it is, you know, from The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, that kind of stuff. Um, on the back it says, Sting is an ancient elvish blade. When orcs or goblins are near, the blade glowed blue, alerting the wielder and others who could see it to their presence. Bilbo Baggins had it engraved with the Sindarin text translated into English. It reads, Sting is my name, I am the spider's bane also works great as a letter opener. And while it does say Vector Engravings on here, it looks like it was designed by Juniper and Ivy Designs. So next we have something else in a plastic bag. So this does look sort of like a tapestry, just like a wall hanging. It doesn't have any sort of backing or anything on it. This is a really, really cool design. And it says, without stories, we wouldn't be human beings at all by Philip Pullman. So this does remind me a lot of his dark materials because it has the polar bear and everything. So that is really cool. And this was designed by Holly Dunn Design. And in like all of my videos, every creator is gonna be listed down below in the description. So it looks like this luggage tag which is very shiny, is actually related to our book of the month. So this is like a swag item, I believe. And it is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshki. This is a book that has been very highly anticipated by a lot of people, and I'm not too sure what it's about, but I absolutely love the cover. We do also have a like handwritten type of note from the author. And because it is an exclusive, um, for Owl Crate it is also signed. And then look at that under the dust jacket. It is just absolutely gorgeous. 
So it looks like our main difference in the cover for the books is that the original had a more gold um, tint, whereas now we have silver. So on all that like wrought, it's not iron, but like on that metal work on the cover, instead of gold, we're looking at silver. I really do prefer silver and it is just absolutely gorgeous. I am still not entirely sure what this is about and I do sometimes just prefer going into my books blind, but from what I sort of gathered just skimming through the summary here, it is set in Paris and I do believe it is a fantasy book, so I'm very excited for this. Again, I just absolutely love this cover. And then we do lastly have a sneak peek card sort of thing for the theme of February, which is going to be Whimsical Beasts. And then the second book box that I have here is the Unplugged book box for January. This one actually showed up the exact same day as my Owl Crate. This one was a little bit late this month. Usually the Unplugged book box shows up around the beginning of January. However, there was an issue with the book. So the book that they had selected for this box, which I still don't know what it is yet, um, we usually get a hardcover book in these boxes. We as customers pay for the box expecting a hardcover book and so they in turn were going to the publisher and we're going to be paying for a hardcover book. However, apparently at some sort of last minute, the publisher decided that it was only going to be a book in paperback. So what they ended up doing is doing a survey to sort of figure out the majority of people that get this subscription box. Would we prefer getting a second paperback new book or would we prefer to have part of our money refunded to cover the cost of like the difference between the paperback and the hardcover? The majority of people ended up wanting a second paperback book, so we should actually have two books in this box. But again, I don't know the theme and I have no idea what to expect from this. Okay, and so here is the card for our January box. Apparently the theme was one door closes, another door opens, and we do have our spoiler info on the back. One thing I absolutely love about them is they have all of their stuff in tissue paper and I absolutely love it. It is gorgeous. Okay, so the first item, I don't know if it was supposed to not be in a wrapper or not, but we do have a book light. Um, this one, it is still um, with the plastic in it, so the battery hasn't been started or anything yet, but it is just looks like a standard sort of book light. One thing I do love is on the handle, I guess, here, it does say Lumos, which is, you know, just super, super cute. And according to my spoiler card, it does not look like they have any name listed for the creator or idea behind this, so I'm gonna assume it's just the Unplugged Book Box team. The next item started falling out of its wrapping already, but it does look like a candle. It looks like it is called I Smell Snow, and I'm gonna assume it is created by Three Knox. It is Icy Peppermint and Cranberry Woods, which is very interesting. I definitely smell the cranberry more than peppermint. I do have a like a slight hint of mint on the back, so it's gonna be very interesting to burn it and see what is the overall scent. But it is a very gorgeous, just sort of white candle with, if you guys can see it, there we go. Some very nice sparkly glitter on top. And so this candle was inspired by the Gilmore Girls because this is a phrase that Lorelai says quite often when it's winter time. The next item we have here is again in their purple tissue paper. So this here is called Lunar Dust. This, these are bath bomb crumbles is what they're calling it. The scent is Juniper Breeze, which I can't smell right away, but it does have a zipper pouch. So we are going to risk opening it so we can smell it. It has a very nice, faint sort of florally woodsy smell, which is actually very, very nice. I do prefer this kind of stuff because I don't usually take baths. So I will sometimes just sort of sprinkle this in my shower water um, and it smells really, really nice. This one was inspired by the Lunar Chronicles and this one is created by the Witch's Bath. The next item we have here is a beanie that says winter is here. This is actually a really, really cute item. Um, it is actually a very nice quality. It's not too rough, which I sometimes find is the case with certain things that are knitted or crocheted. Um, but this is a really, really nice quality one. I currently live in Arizona, and even though it is still January, still the middle of winter, uh, yesterday it was 70 degrees. So this will not get too much use right now, but it is very adorable. And I think obviously we know that this one was inspired by Game of Thrones. 
And again, no creator is credited on the card, so I'm going to assume that it is from the Unplugged Book Box team. And then it looks like the last item before we get to our books is a lip balm. Um, this is what the wrapping on it looks like. Looks sort of like a carnival or fair sort of thing to me. Um, and it is called Finding Blue. It is by Cherry Pit Crafts. And it doesn't really have a scent listed on here. So again, we are going to smell it and see if we find one. I can't quite tell what that is. I want to say it's some sort of fruit like scent, but I'm not entirely sure, but you can never have enough lip balm. And this one was inspired by Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and it was created by Cherry Pick Crafts. So now we are down to our last little bits before we get to the books. So we have our little paper items. They always include a playlist that goes with the book. They don't give you any spoilers on here, but it is a playlist you can look up on Spotify, I believe, that you can listen to with the book. Um, they also have Gainsey's Mint Smoothie on the back. This one's going to be inspired by the Raven Cycle. And then we have like a 2018 versus 2019 page with some goals. They always include a like reflection page, journal page sort of thing. Um, so those ones are included as well. And then we have two paperback books this month. So we're going to get into the first one again, wrapped up super nicely. Okay, I'm going to assume... Again, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there are two envelopes, but they usually include this envelope with their book of the month that you open after you're done reading it, because it will have some spoiler items in there. So I'm thinking this was the book they thought was going to be coming out in hardcover, maybe, but we do have Annalise Rising by Brenda Drake. I do not know what this book is about, I have never heard about it, but I absolutely love this cover. It is gorgeous. Okay, so this book does sound very intriguing, and it sounds like it's going to have a lot of action. So apparently, a stranger gives Annalise a list of names before he dies, and she finds her name on this list. So that is very, you know, suspicious right away. So then she ends up finding the man's grandson named Merrick, and they uncover the truth that Annalise is a descendant of the god of death known as a riser, and not only does she have power over corpses, but it appears that they end up turning into killers. So this is a very intriguing book, and I'm actually very excited to pick this up. And then the other one that we have in here, I believe is our extra one because there is no envelope that goes with the book, but it is The Nirvana Threads by Rachel Tremblay. Um, this is a very thin book, so it is very interesting. Um, just flipping through it right away, there's some sort of graphic novel style in the back. I don't know what that has anything to do with, but very interesting. So this is a very interesting one. It's a magical punk and spiritual romance type of book. Set in the 90s, Carly is a wild 25-year-old drifter who moves back with her parents after surviving a traumatic incident. Back home, she starts seeing things that she doesn't understand, and the feelings that come with them are overwhelmingly blissful. Um, when chasing the source of her new joy starts to pull her closer to death, she must find a way to harness this power that makes her feel so alive. So this one, I feel like, is very abstract a little bit. With the summary, I don't fully know what's going to happen, but it is very intriguing as well. And then the very last thing that we have in the box is going to be our theme reveal for February, and that is Listen to Your Heart. So those were all the things in the two boxes that we got. So now we're going to go straight into the normal book haul. The first three books that I have here are some of the most exciting books, in my opinion. Um, these are ones that I actually won in a giveaway that Maggie Steve Otter was doing on Twitter. She had some international books on there, and you just sort of commented and she picked some people to win these books, and I thought I was only going to be getting one book, but I, she actually sent me three. They are all signed and personalized, and I am just super excited. So the first two books that we have here are The Raven Boys and The Dream Thieves. These are both written in Chinese. Um, they are actually in the traditional style, so you read from like top to bottom and right to left. Um, speaking to my husband, I was showing him these because he is a native Chinese speaker, um, but he said based on the fact that it's actually a book printed with the traditional Chinese from top to bottom, this is most likely a publisher from Taiwan. Um, not China, but 
These are super exciting. And then I also received a Japanese version of Lament. Now, Lament is one of my favorite books by Maggie Stiefvater. It was like her first book that I have ever picked up. And I have those over here as well. Um, this is my Maggie Stiefvater shelf. And I need to do a reread of these. These are her books that are fairy related. And again, this is just super gorgeous. I love how like tiny this one is compared to the other two but again it's going to be the same sort of like traditional top to bottom right to left but this one is in Japanese. Now going into books that I purchased for myself obviously we have Mass Effect Andromeda Annihilation. This is a book that came out I want to say in November or December and I just never picked it up so when I saw we got more stock into our Barnes and Noble I did have to pick this up. This is a sort of spin-off continuation of the Mass Effect Andromeda world, which I've been really wanting to get back into to play again anyway, but this follows the Quarian arc and so I had to pick it up. Then I also picked up the last two books in the new covers of Artemis Fowl. This is one of my absolute favorite series and you guys have seen this for the last few months. I've been purchasing these and these are the last two. So we have Artemis Fowl and the Atlantis Complex, and then Artemis Fowl, The Last Guardian. Again, these covers are absolutely gorgeous. I am in dire need of a reread, especially since the movie is going to be coming out this summer, I believe. Then through the beginning, through like the middle of January, Barnes & Noble was still having a buy two, get one free manga sale. And even though I did that at the end of December, I also did it again in January. So we have volume two of Tokyo Tarareba Girls by Akiko Higashimura as well as volume three and volume four. I have not read the first volume of this yet. I do own it. I read Princess Jellyfish and absolutely love that. And so I had to pick these up. I do prefer reading my manga in multiple volumes at a time. So knowing I just had one volume there, I had to pick up the rest that were available. I also picked up Queen's Quality Volume 6 by Kyosuke Motomi. This is another series where, again, I have not started Queen's Quality, but I absolutely love the prequel series, QQ Sweeper, and so I picked it up. I also picked up Volume 1 of Ao Haru Ride by Ayosaki Sasuka, as well as Volume 2. I don't know if there's only two volumes in this series, but these are the only two that I saw for it. It looked like a really, really cute shoujo manga, and so I picked them up. I also picked up volume 13 of The Demon Prince of Momochi House by Aya Shoto. This is another series that I have been reading, have been loving, and so when the newest one was out, I had to pick it up. And then a new series that I have not read anything by this author before is The Promised Neverland. I picked up volume 1 by Kayu Shirai, and then also volume 2. I have heard many good things about this series, and it seemed very intriguing. Apparently these are orphans that live at an orphanage, and they are being raised as sort of food for the monsters outside in the forest or something. Something creepy when it looks so happy on the cover, you know? So I had to pick it up. I also picked up Fence Volume 2 by C.S. Picot and Joanna the Mad. This one collects volumes 5 through 8 of their series, and this is one that I absolutely love the first volume, and so I had to pick this one up. It is fencing, it is amazing art style, and it has LGBTQ rep as well. And then these were purchases that I probably didn't need to make, but at the same time I, I needed to make. I purchased two little golden books. The first one is I Am Captain Kirk, and then we also have I Am Mr. Spock. These are just adorable. Um, these are based on the original series TV show, which I absolutely love. I just absolutely love them. They were like $5 each, and so I definitely did that. And then these last group of books I actually picked up while I was at Ace Comic Con this month. That was a Comic Con I was going to vlog for you guys, but it ended up being something very sort of small and intimate and not very much footage in general. So I'm going to show you the books that I got, but Phoenix Fan Fest is going to be happening again in May, and that one is much bigger and I am definitely planning on going. So that one will definitely have a vlog for you, but we did pick up 
some books while we were at Ace Comic Con this month. The first one was Super Chill by Adam Ellis. This is somebody who is an amazing panel artist. I absolutely love his stuff. I follow him on Instagram and Facebook and I follow his cats and everything and he was there personally at Ace Comic Con at a booth and he signed it for me and I geeked out so hard and probably made an embarrassing mess of myself, but I am so glad that I have this. Then I also picked up an independently published book that is Seer from the Green by Lauren Jankowski. This I don't know a whole bunch about. I do know that there is shapeshifters in it, and it was a whole series. This is the first book, and I believe she had, I want to say, four or five on the table, and it just seemed very interesting. Um, so this follows a woman named Isis who lives a normal life until the day she photographs a murder scene for her job. When the body disappears from the photographs, she is determined to solve the mystery, and it just... That's intriguing to me. It grabbed me from that, basically, and... Again, this is one of those ones that I got signed because, of course, why not? And then the last thing that I have here are there are actually three of them. So this is a graphic novel series, I want to say. I'm hoping these are in the right order. This is the order, no, part one of three? I don't know. This is the order they came out of my bag in. But this is called Nomad. Um, this is... Who is this by? Where is the author's name? So this is Nomad. This is the first like full on volume of it. Then we have a part one of three and then we have an art style book. I got all of these for a really great deal. Basically all three of them came for the price of the normal book. Uh, and this one is by Andrew Kafori. I want to say the last name is. And again, it was signed. I absolutely love when I can go to Comic Cons or I guess fan fests, as some of them are called now, um, and meet the people that create this. One of my favorite things going there, besides getting to meet celebrities and getting autographs and everything, is finding people that do independently published graphic novels and books. That is my, like, jam there, and so I was super happy to find these. So that was everything that I had for you guys this month. Um, I bet this is a longer video because I also had the two unboxings, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what books you guys bought this month, if you've read any of the ones that I've already purchased. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I do have videos up every Monday and Thursday, so I will see you then. Bye!